this is one of my favourite topics in biology. It's called the genetic code. I've underlined it with a bit of a double helix here because the genetic code is the language of DNA. And in this video, we're going to talk about how that language works and what the code words are that we use. So to start with, I'm going to recap genes. And if you haven't already, I recommend you go and watch the DNA chromosomes and genes video. Click on genes here and it will take you to that video. So in the video about genes, we talked about the fact that genes are segments of chromosomes that contain the code required to direct the manufacture of a polypeptide or an RNA molecule. Now, put very simply, that means that genes have the information or the code that we need and the instructions that we need telling a cell how to make polypeptides and RNA molecules. We're going to focus on polypeptides because when we're talking about polypeptides, we're talking about proteins. And we know how important proteins are and that's where genes play their pivotal part really, is in the production of proteins. So let's have a look at how a gene actually holds the code and the instructions telling a cell how to make a protein. So let's bring back our diagram showing us the breakdown here of a chromosome, which of course is made up of DNA, all wound up and condensed into this chromosome formation here. And then our DNA is made up of nucleotides, which contain these sequences of nitrogen bases, and there are four types. There are A, T, C, and G. Well, those four bases are what make up our code. They are the alphabet that make up the language of cells. And that's what we're going to be looking at here. How do we break down these A's, T's, C's, and G's into a code and how do we read that information so that we can produce proteins. Okay, so what are proteins made of? Well, they're made of amino acids. And how many amino acids are there? There are 20. This is gonna freak you out a bit. Here are the 20 amino acids. Now, this is their chemical structure and it can be a little bit overwhelming there are lots of different types, but the thing is, let's not worry too much about their chemical structure. For our purposes, let's just picture them as 20 different shapes. So, as you can imagine, and it's probably easier looking at them as 20 different simple shapes like this, imagine putting those shapes into different combinations. Whatever the combination was would determine the structure of the overall product. And that's exactly what happens with proteins. We know how critical structure is to the function of a protein. And that structure of the protein will be dependent on the sequence of these amino acids and that they're in the particular order that they need to be in. And how do we know what sequence to put these amino acids? Well, that's due to the A's, T's, C's and G's in our genes. So let's have a look at how we actually use those bases to code for specific amino acids. Now remember, there are 20 amino acids. So if there are 20 amino acids, that means we need at least 20 different code words made up of our A's, T's, C's and G's in order to code for those 20 amino acids. So starting very simply, if we were to use one base at a time to spell code words, that only gives us four possible combinations, A, T, C, or G. Four code words is not going to help us code for 20 different amino acids. So the code words must be more than one base long. So let's get rid of that one and have a look at maybe two bases long. So here we go. If we have code words that are two bases long, that gives us... 16 different code words. It's more, but it's still not getting us up to the 20 that we need to be able to code for each of our individual amino acids. So two bases long, not going to give us enough code words. So we'll scrap that one. And we'll go to three bases long. And what we find is 
When the code words are three bases long, that gives us 64 combinations that you can see here, which of course is well and truly enough to code for our 20 amino acids. So we, our code words in the genetic code are in fact three bases long. Here they are here. And we don't actually call them code words, we call them codons. That's the name for a group of three bases, DNA codons. So our DNA codons are here, made up of the four bases, A, T, C and G. If we were to look at RNA codons that were produced from these DNA codons, they would be complementary, which means wherever we see a G, there should be a C, and wherever we see a C, there should be a G. Wherever we see a T, there should be an A, but wherever we see an A, there will be a U, because in RNA, as we know, they contain the nucleotide with the base U instead of T. So if we remove this and have a look at our complementary codons, we can see the base U is starting to appear in our combinations. And that is for the reason which we just talked about. The complementary base pairing is occurring, but we've got U instead of T. These are our RNA codons and they are involved in reading the message from the DNA in the nucleus and then we convert it into a RNA message and then that message travels elsewhere to be translated into our amino acids and into our proteins. Now because the RNA codons act as messages, we actually call it mRNA which stands for messenger RNA. Now if I bring in my final piece of paper here, this is what we call the genetic code. These are mRNA codons, and they are the ones that you saw on the previous page, and they show you the combination of bases that code for which particular amino acid. So these four mRNA codons here, Two of them code for phenylalanine amino acid and two of them code for the leucine amino acid. As you can see, these four here all code for the leucine amino acid. So what you're probably seeing is that there are more than one mRNA codon for each amino acid. And that's because, as we saw before, there are 64 combinations of codons and there's only 20 amino acids. So we do have overlap where we have more than one codon for each amino acid. We also have codons like AUG, which indicate the starting point of a gene, and codons like UAA or UAG or UGA, which indicate the stop point for a gene. So they're important for us to be able to tell where a gene starts and where a gene finishes. Now, more of this is going to be looked at in detail in videos on protein synthesis on the stages of transcription and translation. Transcription being going from our DNA to our messenger RNA, and translation being taking that messenger RNA and converting it into our sequences of amino acids and producing proteins. So guys, that's the genetic code. It is fascinating that this process and this language exists inside of the cells of living things. So I hope you've really enjoyed it and it's got you interested to learn some more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Yeah.